Thanks for joining us back here at the 2024 CUSA kickoff presented by Sideline Design. Uh, we're here with UTEP head coach Scotty Walden and student athletes Trey Goodman and Maurice Westmoreland. Uh, we're going to start with an opening statement from coach before we start with questions, and then we'll jump to any questions on Zoom. Um, if you raise your hand in the chat, we'll get to you when we finish in the room here. Uh, coach, welcome. All right. Well, we're really glad to be here. Excited to be back in the great state of Texas, uh, back home. Um, it's, uh, it's an exciting time at UTEP, and we're really excited to, uh, to share everything we're building, everything we're growing out in El Paso. And uh, to keep me on track, I got, some, I got some notes here, some things to rattle off so I don't, because uh, I've been known to get long-winded, so I, I, don't, I don't definitely want to draw away time from other teams and, and, uh, and especially our players, because uh, you, know, you definitely want to hear from these two uh, great ambassadors of our program, and so, so thankful for that. Um, I want to thank, first off, Dr. Dr. Wilson, our president, um, and uh, Jim Center, our athletic director, for the opportunity to be the head football coach at the University of Texas at El Paso. When the opportunity ca uh, came up, um, it was a, it was a no-brainer, um, you know, because of the leadership and the alignment that those two have and the vision for our program. And so I want to first off thank them because it's an honor to represent the 915. It's an honor to represent El Paso, and it's an honor to be back in the great state of Texas, uh, the best state in the country to play uh, college football. And uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be back in the great state. Uh, I want to thank Judy for uh, Conference USA and her leadership. Um, you know, I, I just think that uh, in, in the, in the uh, space that we are in, um, in, in conference realignment, um, in the atmosphere we're in in college football, I think Judy's leadership has been second to none um, to what the way she has positioned Conference USA. Um, you know, we, we, we obviously had Liberty play in the Fiesta Bowl uh, last year representing our conference, uh, you, know, play, you know, showing that our conference, um, you know, is talented enough and has – uh, the pieces to compete at the highest level, but also positioning the conference with adding uh, great members uh, like Kennesaw State, Delaware, uh, Missouri State, and the growth of our conference to compete in, 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 today's, in today's landscape. Um, you know, that, that's a credit to her leadership, so I'm, I'm very excited to be, um, you know, in this league uh, and, and, and under such great leadership. Uh, I want to recognize uh, some people uh, that, that came along with us today. I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't. Our deputy AD, Michael Levy's in the back. Uh, Michael uh, came to us from TCU, has been instrumental in our growth in our Gold Mine Collective and, and fundraising. And, um, you know, I'm very, very blessed he's here today. Drew Bonney, um, our SID, is here today. Um, uh, and he is, uh, you know, the, the problem, the only problem I got is that obviously I knew I was going to be, uh, you know, the third b best dressed guy on this trip, okay, because these two were going to outdo me. All right, but the problem is I got two, uh, you know, studs. Uh, all right, you know, my, my, my SID wears Dolce and Cabana. All right, my, my <laughs> deputy AD, Michael Levy, swagged out, you know, to the nines. So I'm now the one, two, three, four, fifth best dressed person here. So it's making me look bad, but I appreciate them being here. Um, you know, they're the best at what they do, so honored that they're here. Um, I want to give a shout out to some special people that have uh, uh, come up to media days with us. Babe Laufenberg, um, who is a former uh, Dallas Cowboys quarterback, um, has, has uh, you know, he's here with us today. Um, you know, his son, Luke, um, you know, who tragically passed away, played for the Miners. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we honor uh, Luke through our, our Live Like Luke um, uh, foundation. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something that my predecessor, Dana Dimlin, has staffed did a, a, an amazing job at, uh, at orchestrating um, our players, the nutrition that they are fed um, is in the Live Like Luke fight station every day. And we, we don't rem we ne never forget, um, you know, what, what, what the fight uh, that Luke Laufenberg went through and, and his, fave, uh, his, his uh, dad, Babe, we want to honor uh, every chance we get. So we're very thankful that he's here today. Uh, we have uh, two former minors in the room, uh, Tony Tolbert and uh, Jabril Rashad. Uh, the only thing I ask those two guys is how hey, you guys got another year eligibility because we win a championship if we had those two. So Tony Tolbert, a legendary minor, uh, you know, played linebacker for us and a three-time Super Bowl champ, back-to-back uh, -back Super Bowls with America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to win a Super Bowl again. We're going to win the Super Bowl this year. It's coming. Right, I'm a big Cowboys fan if you can't tell. All right, but uh, Tony played for the Cowboys. Uh, honored he's back. And uh, Jabril does an amazing job in the Metroplex with kids and uh, was a corner for the Miners. So we're very, very blessed. And I'd be certainly remiss. My mom would kill me. My mom's in the room. My family uh, who has come up. We're very, it's, it's great to be back. Uh, and, and I appreciate their support coming up. And uh, last but certainly not least, I have two phenomenal ambassadors of our program. I, I can't think of two better young men 
uh, to represent our program here today and the culture that we're building and the brand of football that we're building uh, than, than the, these two guys. These two guys epitomize everything that we're building at UTEP and out in El Paso. Uh, starting out with Maurice Westmoreland. Uh, Maurice is a, you know, a, a senior linebacker from Klein Forest High School, played his Juco ball at Kilgore Junior College. Very, very blessed and thankful that Mo, um, you know, stayed in the midst of the transition. You know, we had about 48 players uh, that either got in the portal or graduated from last year's team before I took the job. Um, and we, and I'll, I'll kind of get to some numbers in a minute for you. But we had 48 guys depart this team from last year's team. Um, and I, 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 I want to praise Maurice Westmoreland for sticking out and finishing being a minor. That meant a lot to him. And I'm just thankful that he gave me a chance and gave my staff a chance. And this young man is as talented as any young man I've been around, but he's also as good as any ma young man I've been around. He epitomizes our culture. He's a phenomenal leader. Um, in addition, he's an unbelievable athlete. Not only is he a linebacker for our football team, he throws the shot and the disc. Um, and what did you place in the conference meet, Mo? Uh, fourth. He know. placed fourth in the conference meet in the shot put. And that is, that is after we did spring ball and he practiced very minimal. Just to show you what kind of athlete this young man is, he's unbelievable. Holds a 2.63 uh, GPA, cumulative GPA over his career, and is, is a kinesiology major, going to go on to do great things. And uh, next up is uh, Trey Goodman uh, representing the Blue Blaze offense. Uh, our, our defense is known as the Orange Swarm, and our offense is known as the Blue Blaze. And Trey Goodman's representing the Blue Blaze. That's why he's wearing the baby blue, uh, you know, powder <laughs> suit right here. Um, you know, Trey is uh, – a phenomenal young man who, again, I'm very thankful and blessed that Trey has uh, uprooted and moved uh, all the way from Tennessee uh, to come to West Texas with us. Uh, Trey's got a very unique story. was a quarterback in high school, Norcross High School in Atlanta, Georgia. And we signed him at Austin P. Had very minimal offers coming out of high school. But we saw that Trey was not only a great player, but a, a, a what we call an OKG, our kind of guy. And that's what these two guys are, our kind of people, our kind of guys that fit our culture. And it didn't take long for us to recognize that with Trey and his beautiful family. And Trey committed to us. Uh, we put, you know, at the FCS level, uh, there's partial scholarships, and we signed him to a partial. It didn't take but a semester to put, it, put, it, put him on a full ride uh, because of what he did on the field and what he did off the field. Became a team captain for us, led us to two conference championships uh, in, our, in our three years there at Austin P. Um, uh, like I said, a Georgia native. Uh, he is a wide receiver for us. Former quarterback, I love recruiting those guys because they're, they, they, they have such a knack and understand what the quarterback's looking for, and Trey epitomized that. But bigger than that, you know, Trey is a multidisciplinary studies major and holds a 3.2 cumulative GPA and epitomizes the culture of our program along with Mo. So we're very thankful uh, that, that he is here. Um, you know, when, when we took this program over, we talked about when I interviewed for the job, uh, there was a program mantra uh, that I stated to Jim Center and Dr. Wilson, and, it, and it's win the West. And, and we put that on our, um, our, our, our hashtags. We put it everywhere. But these guys know we, we, we are intentional with installing our culture. It's not just words that we put. We, we want to live it out every day. We want to install it every day. So what it means to win the West is four phases. Win El Paso, win West Texas, win the state of Texas, and build UTEP into being one of the most prominent G5 programs in the nation, which we have the resources, we have the people, and we have the ability to do. And not a lot of people thought that when I took this job. And I, I'm a big, I love having a chip on my shoulder. I love dispelling myths. And that's what we're doing day by day is dispelling myths about our program. And I have some stats to back that up. But we got to win El Paso first. And something I'm very proud of, um, we, have to be, we, we have a very unique opportunity at UTEP to where we are a G5 program, but we can create a power four atmosphere at our place. We have a stadium that holds over 50,000 people that when these two men, uh, Mr. Rashad and Tony Tober played in, the thing was sold out and people were sitting on the mountain watching the game. We can have an, env an environment unlike any environment in college football at our place. We have such a unique opportunity, but we have to put a product on the field and in the community that El Pasoans want to come and see. And that, that also goes for our sister city, Ciudad Juarez, which is, you know, home to, you know, another 1.5 million people. And you, you combine that, you're talking over 2.5 million people in our region that we have an opportunity to impact through the game of football, which is beautiful. And so the, 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 the one stat that stood out to me when I interviewed for this job that made me just put me over the top is last year, this team averaged over 18,000 fans a game, nearly 20,000 fans a game, finished second in this league 
okay, in attendance. We have the most passionate fan base in this conference and in the country, and all we have to do is put a product on that field and in the community that they can be proud of. Uh, we served over 400 hours of community service. These two guys, along with our football team, put in over 400 hours of community service this past spring, uh, which was unbelievable, and, and we want to become one with the El Paso community. Uh, in addition to that, our team, uh, we want to give, again, our, our, our people something to be proud of uh, in the classroom and in the community. This team set, in one semester, the GPA team record in UTEP history with accumulating a 3.1 team GPA. When we took the program over, it was somewhere near a 2.5, and now it has risen with 115 players to a 3.1 team GPA, and I am so proud of those two stats from our players. I'm not just proud of the touchdowns they scored, the sacks they had. I'm proud of those two stats because in order to win on Saturday nights and on Thursdays, Wednesdays, Tuesdays in Conference USA, right, in order to win, right, we have to win off the field first. We have to win uh, the community. We have to win in the classroom. And then we eventually want to win to where the young men in West Texas want to come play for UTEP, okay, because we, we need to be the standard in West Texas. We are the school in West Texas, and we want to be known as that. And then we want to be the school in Texas that people want to come to. You know, when you, when you come to Las Cruces, when you come through Las Cruces and you're heading to El Paso, there's a sign that says Beaumont, Texas, 850-some-odd miles away, all right? We want that young man in Beaumont, Texas to think about being a minor. And we, we just so happen to sign the number one uh, rated player all-time school history, Jalen Jones, outside linebacker, uh, who my man Mo over here is going to mentor uh, to be the next Maurice Westmoreland uh, from Beaumont Westbrook High School. But that's what we want. We want to be known. We are the University of Texas at El Paso. There's not one coach on my staff that has an area of recruiting outside the state of Texas. We are going to own the state of Texas in recruiting, and we're going to make a conscious effort to recruit the state of Texas in everything that we do. So when a young man grows up in the state of Texas, I want him to look up at the Pater P logo. I want him to look up at that pickaxe, and I want him to say, you know what? I, I really want to look at being a minor. I want to look at living in El Paso, and that's the standard we want to have. And so uh, going back to uh, talking about our team, you know, we have 56 percent of our team is new. So I, I told you uh, around 58 uh, players, or excuse me, 47 players uh, either got in the portal or graduated from last year's team. We brought in, our staff brought in 64 new players into this program and retained some phenomenal young men such as Maurice Westmoreland, A.J. Odom, Josiah Allen, and the list goes on. Cade McConnell, uh, the list goes on. And, and we, we feel really good about the nucleus we have uh, and, and getting those guys to bond together and to come together to uh, unify as one to go represent El Paso. So I'm really excited about that. But 56% of our team is new. 58 players, um, and again, I'll be remiss. I think I mentioned this, but I got to say it again. I'm so proud of our staff uh, bringing in the number one signing class in Conference USA and to get to hold the torch for recruiting in Conference USA. And I know those are just numbers on paper right now, and we got to put the pen to paper on the field. But again, I believe before you can win on the field, you got to win off the field. And so for, for the UTEP Miners to sign the best class in school history and a team that had consistently been ranked sixth, seventh, eighth, you know, in the conference rankings and recruiting to jump to number one in just two months, um, you know, says a lot about what we have to offer in El Paso and at UTEP. Because when parents come out there, when players come out there, their eyes open and they see the potential of everything that we have. And, and they want to be a part of, of the culture we're building. And so I'm really, really proud of that. And it also speaks to our staff who got boots on the ground and got running really early. Uh, 58 pr uh, players on our roster from the state of Texas. We want to continue to grow that. In the high school class that we just signed, which was the number one class in this conference, 13 players from that class are state champions in something. Track, baseball, basketball, football. We want to sign winners. Okay, the only way you know how to win is to recruit winners. I want to be surrounded by winners. These two guys are winners. My coaching staff is a, is a, is a staff full of winners. But the only way you can win is to be surrounded by winners because winners know how to win, period. And so when we recruit young men, we want them to come from winning programs, winning backgrounds, winning attitudes, and everything that they do. And 13 of our players we signed are state champions. We returned nine starters on this football team, which, again, uh, in this day, day and age of college football, I think if you would have said that 10 years ago, nine doesn't sound like very much. Um, you know what? That's a decent amount um, in terms of, in, in terms of uh, our program. You know, offense, we returned three. Defense, we returned, uh, I think, around, around four or five or something like that. And then we run two, we returned two on defense. Um, but to have returners um, coming back, again, we do have a lot of new players. Um, but I think if you go through, even if they didn't start at UTEP, they started somewhere uh, coming out of the portal. So that's really cool. Um, you know, like I said, 
Uh, very excited. Uh, we had three undrafted free agents. Um, you know, Gavin Hardison, Andrew Myers, Zuri Henry from last year's team, along with Tyrese Knight and Elijah Klein, who were drafted um, two draft picks. And so I just th think it speaks to the type of players that we can recruit um, here in El Paso. So really, really excited about what we're building. Um, excited where we're at, and excited to build uh, to build our program with uh, with such great people. Um, but uh, could not be more thrilled to be back in the state of Texas and represent the city of El Paso. So uh, don't mean to get long-winded. I'm just very excited about what we're doing, what we're building. All right, and I'll open it up uh, to you guys. All right, uh, we'll jump to two quick questions on Zoom. Uh, Sam Guzman, go ahead. Hi, Coach Walden. Uh, Sam Guzman, KTSM9 News in Sam. El Paso. Uh, just obviously entering the first year of, uh, I guess, a rebuilding phase, considering it's a new era of UTEP football. What are the realistic expectations you have set for this squad for this upcoming season? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Sam, is we, we want to be we want to put a competitive brand of football on the field every single week. You know, I, I, you know, I know, I know this is talking season. This is you know, as the great Steve Spurry would say, right? You know, it's talking season, and there's a lot of predictions and you know, uh, you know, out there and stuff like that, and uh, not a lot of people believe in us right now, and that that's fine. You know, that's okay. They're, 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 you know, uh, it's uh, it's it's one of those deals where um, you know people are going to find out find out one way or the other, and uh, at the end of the day, we know what we're building. We know what we're doing, and we know the expectations we have for our program and our players. And I'm, I'm not one of those guys that's like, hey, you know, uh, I'm aiming year one to have this many wins or that many wins. To me, it's all about putting a competitive product on the field every single day, and that starts with having competitive practices each and every single day. And so that's what we aim to do. That's what we strive to do. All right, we'll jump to Light on Sports on Zoom uh, for the last question here. Coach Walden. Shortly after being hired, you were able to land the number one high school recruiting class in Conference USA, according to 24-7 Sports. How were you able to get recruits to buy in so quickly? Yeah, I think, I think when you, that's a great question. I think when you present them uh, with a vision um, of what we're doing, it's not just random, hey, bring them to El Paso, uh, take them to a nice restaurant, play some games, and then, hey, see you later. Um, we were very intentional, number one, about the young men that we were, young men that we recruited. And number two, I think we did a great job of laying out the vision and forecasting the next uh, two to three to four years and where we plan to be. And then I think opening their eyes to what UTEP can be. Uh, we, we've, you walk down our, our, our wall of fame, you, you've got the greats Tony Tolbert, you've got Don Maynard, an NFL Hall of Famer on there. You, you go down, you always have Aaron Jones, you have Jordan Palmer, you have Will Hernandez. You just keep going down the list and kids start saying, wow, there's been great players that have played at UTEP. Um, I, I always open with this line and it, and it takes people by, by, by storm, especially recruits. You know what I'm saying? Hey, did you guys know that UTEP has beaten Ole Miss, has beaten uh, Florida State and beaten TCU in a bowl game? And uh, they're like, no, coach, I didn't know that. Now, I don't tell them it's the 1950s, 60s. I really, who cares <laughs> about that, all right? It happened, and it can happen again, right? You know, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, they start to believe and see that. But then also, guys, we're, we're building a power four locker room right now that's going to be unveiled in the next few weeks. I think when they see the buy-in from the administration, they see the buy-in from the community, we are a, the coolest thing about our, our place, we're a, we're a one-horse town. And there, there's not an NFL team out there. Where I just came from at Austin P, phenomenal university, phenomenal place. But we were in Nashville, Tennessee, where you're, you're behind Middle Tennessee, Vanderbilt, the Predators, the Titans, and so on and so forth. In El Paso, we are the NFL team. You know, we, we have four, uh, you know, TV stations that cover us all the time. You know, the minors are the main event. And I think players see that and they see the potential. And uh, I'm very thankful that they jumped on board. All right, we'll close out with one last question here on the front. Football Writers Association of America, yeah. you are on our uh, Nagurski watch list. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means everything. You know, uh, I go I go in day in, day out, uh, work on my teammates. You know, I, I put in the work for it. So, And my teammates, they make me better. They push me, and I push them to be better. So it means a lot. Coach, what does that mean to you to have uh, somebody uh, on that watch list your first year? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 spe it speaks to Maurice Westmoreland, the hard work he's put in, and, and uh, to have somebody on a national watch list is no small feat. And I think it just sets a precedent for, you know, a guy like Jalen Jones who's in his room, who's a young freshman that sees, hey, you know what, I want to be like Maurice Westmoreland and the rest of our players that see, man, I want to I wanna compete at that level and, and be talked about on a national scale because that's, that's what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to build UTEP into earning respect in our conference, earning respect nationally, and it, it starts with great people and great players like Maurice. So uh, I'm super proud of him.